Hello everyone. I'm Jan, a naturalist with the Alabama Wildlife Federation Alabama Nature Center. At the Nature Center, they call me Redbird because of the cardinal at the end of my walking stick. But we're not going to talk about cardinals today. We're going to talk about a fascinating creature that we have at the Nature Center and that roams wild through the state of Alabama. We hope this video will help you learn more about these fascinating creatures and will help you collect your box turtle data for the Alabama Outdoor Classroom Box Turtle Research Program. We call this box turtle E.T. because her unique alien-like appearance reminded us of the cute extraterrestrial or alien in the movie E.T. Turtles like E.T. are called box turtles because they have the special ability to pull their head, legs, and tail completely into their shell and close it up like a box. They do this when they feel threatened by a predator or when they sense that they are in danger. You can see how E.T.'s shell probably saved her from a fire, probably a forest fire. You can see how dark and burned and charred looking it is on top. Eastern box turtles are all unique in the color of their shells and the pattern. E.T.'s has almost been burned off by the fire that she was in. Box turtle shells have three main parts. The carapace is the top part of the shell. The plastron is the bottom. And it has a hinge that allows that shell to close up like a box. The third part of the shell is the bridge that's located here that connects the plastron with the carapace. A turtle shell is part of their spine and ribs, as you can see in this picture, because their shells are part of their bodies. Turtles can't come out of their shells. If anyone ever asks you if you've seen a turtle running around without its shell, that's a trick question. Tell them no, no. Only Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles can do that. In the real world, their armor is permanent. Do you know where your spine or backbone is? Bend over and feel the bumps going up and down your back. That's your spine. Baby box turtles have bumps on their shells along their spine, which smooth out as they grow older. Over time, their shell with its spine, ribs, and other bones grow just like your bones grow as you get older and become an adult. These different sections or bony plates on the shell are called scoots. They're made of keratin, which is the same material that your fingernails and your hair are made of. Within each scoot, you can see rings, which are called annuli. That's a fun word to say. Say it with me, annuli. These rings represent periods of growth during the turtle's life, like a tree that has growth rings that you can see in the trunk when you cut the tree. For trees, each ring stands for one year. But for turtles, the growth rings or annuli aren't for a specific time. They're for periods of growth. Smaller rings can be a time when food was hard to find, so the turtle didn't grow much. While larger rings may be when resources were plentiful, food was easy to find, and the turtle had a lot of growth. Even though scoots can't tell the exact age of a turtle, they give you clues about its age. The more annuli or growth rings, the older the turtle. Scoots on the bottom of the shell, remember it's called the plastron, are usually worn down by soil, sand, and forest debris, the same way that sandpaper smooths rough edges. Here's a tip 
to help when you're counting. Tilt the turtle shell in the light to see the rings better. Consistency is the most important thing to remember when you are counting annuli. Always use the same scoot for your count. Whether you count a certain ring or not is up to you, but be sure to make the same decision every time. If each of these rings did represent a year, you could expect to see 50 or more rings in a scoot. Do you know how to tell the difference between a male and a female box turtle? There are a few traits that help us distinguish between the two. The most reliable trait is the presence or absence of a concavity or dip in the plastron or belly. If the plastron is flat, like ET, it's a female. If the plastron is concave or curves inward like this one, it's a male. The curve or indentation allows the male to sit securely on top of the female for mating. Another equally reliable but much more difficult to see trait is the location of the vent opening along the tail. First, you need to straighten the turtle's tail carefully. If the tail is longer with a thicker base and the vent opening is located past the margin of the carapace when you hold the tail straight, it is a male. If the tail is shorter, thinner, and the vent opening is located under the carapace when holding the tail straight, it's a female. Females usually have brown eyes and their hind claws are shorter and straighter than males. Males usually have red eyes and sharper, longer, and more curved hind claws. As you can see in this image, eye color is not always a reliable trait. This area behind us is a great example for eastern box turtle habitat. They live in wooded areas and prefer to be in moist areas like stream banks, pond edges, and wetlands. They will travel to more open areas like grasslands and pastures, but will move back to shady, moist areas when it's too hot. Box turtles have a very small home range. That's a problem if someone picks up a box turtle and takes it far away and releases it because they may spend their whole life trying to get back to their home range. It may seem like a big hard shell like this would protect you from everything, but these turtles still have predators. As adults, their biggest threat are loss of habitat, getting hit by cars, and people taking them as pets. When they're young, their shells are soft and they can be eaten by just about anything. Fish, birds, snakes, raccoons. They're like potato chips in the wild. Baby eastern box turtles are about the size of a quarter when they hatch. They pop out of football-shaped eggs that were laid two to four months previously into a hole in the ground. While they're babies, box turtles eat more meat than fruits and vegetables, but they are omnivores, which means they eat both plants and meat. I remember that word because it's om -nom omnivores. They love to eat. Their diet includes mushrooms, berries, other fruit, worms, slugs, and bugs. They have a sharp beak, but no teeth. So how do they chew their food? Their beak, which is made of keratin and is similar to a bird's, allows them 
to bite and pull off chunks of food which they swallow whole. Their beaks and nails grow all the time, but are naturally filed down by rocks, soil, and leaves as they walk and eat. Did you know that box turtles love to swim? They are terrestrial, which means land living, but they spend a lot of time in water. They soak, swim, and even hunt in puddles in the wild. Now, I have a question for you. What do you do when it gets cold outside? Put on a coat, turn on the heater. Have you ever seen a turtle wearing a sweater? No, I haven't either. Turtles, along with other cold-blooded reptiles, bury themselves underground when it gets cold out. This is called brumation. Say that with me, it's a fun word to say. Brumation. This is basically a reptile's way to hibernate. During this time, they slow down tremendously and eat little to nothing. They may stay underground all winter and not come out until it's warm enough for them to be hungry and ready to mate. If all this has you thinking, how cool box turtles are, right? Well, it's important to know you cannot keep a box, a wild box turtle as a pet. Wild animals belong in the wild, especially those animals whose numbers are declining. And eastern box turtles in Alabama are doing just that, declining. So the Alabama Department of Conservation and Natural Resources considers them a protected animal. Being a protected animal means it requires a permit to keep one in captivity and they are illegal to take from the wild. Your school is lucky enough to have a permit that allows you to keep two non-breeding turtles at your school. We would like to thank you for your participation in the Alabama Wildlife Federation's Outdoor Classroom Program and Box Turtle Research. By collecting the information about your turtle, you are helping these fascinating creatures to continue to live in our state and be found in the wild. Thank you.